Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we're going to look at security groups and this is a lab so you're going to need to log into the AWS console. But first, what is a security group? So a security group is basically a virtual firewall and it's controlling traffic to your instances. And when you first launch an EC2 instance, you associate it with one or more security groups. So you can have one EC2 instance behind, you know, two, three, four, five different security groups. And you add rules to each security group that allows traffic to or from instances. So essentially a security group is your first line of defense against hackers. So we saw in the last lab, if you lock down uh, your SSH port to your IP address, it means that a hacker will not be able to even SSH into your EC2 instances. Okay, so let's get started. So I've logged into the AWS console and if we just go Go over to services and we click on EC2. Now we had our EC2 instance uh, from uh, the last lab, but we deleted it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a EC2 instance that we're going to use uh, for the rest of this section of the course, and we'll just keep it running. So go ahead and launch your instance. See if you can do this all on your own without uh, watching me, um, but it's entirely up to you. Um, we'll go ahead and hit uh, Linux AMI. We want a T2 micro, so go ahead and hit next. And then in here, we're going to leave everything as default. Um, we're not going to change anything. Go ahead and hit next. And again, we're going to leave our um, root device volume. So this is our virtual hard disk in the cloud. We're going to leave that as default. You can go ahead and add some tags. So I'm just going to call this my web server. Go ahead and I'm going to add a few tags here just so we can see it a bit later on in the course. So department, I'm going to say, um, you know, uh, de developers. And then I'm going to uh, add in my team. And this could be my R&D team. And then I'm going to add in my employee ID, employee ID, and just make up a number and then go ahead and hit next. And so here we go, we've got our security group. Now we're going to use an existing security group. We're gonna use the My Web DMZ that we created in the last uh, lecture. If you still don't have this, just create a new one, call it My Web DMZ, and then add in these um, uh, particular ports. So HTTP, SSH, and HTTPS, that's port 80, 22, and 443. Go ahead and hit review and launch. Uh, and again, you'll get this little warning message because your SSH port is open to the world, uh, which means that anyone in the world can try and SSH into this instance and try and brute force it. It's entirely up to you if you want to lock that, that down to your IP address. If you do lock your SSH port down, however, and um, you do notice like in a couple of hours from now that you can't actually SSH into your EC2 instance anymore, it's very likely that your IP address has changed. Um, so you'd have to go in and update that security group rule. I'm just going to leave everything open uh, just because it makes it easier. Um, we're not going to have this EC2 instance running for very long. So go ahead and hit launch and then just select your existing key pair and uh, select this I acknowledge that I have access to it and hit launch instances. And so that will now bring up this instance. What we're going to do is we're going to do exactly what we did last time. So we're going to SSH into this instance. We're going to go apply all all our security updates, we're going to go in there and install Apache, and then we're going to make a little web page that says Hello Cloud Gurus. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start playing with security groups and see um, you know, what we can do with them. So I'm just going to pause the video here and wait for this EC2 instance uh, to provision. Okay, so my EC2 instance is ready now. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the public IP address, and now I'm going to open up my terminal window. Okay, so I'm in my terminal window, and all I'm going to do is type SSH EC2 hyphen user at, and then my public IP address, and then the private key, which is called my EC2 key pair, and go ahead and hit enter, type yes, type yes, and then it has now uh, connected to the host. So I'm going to elevate my privileges to root, and I'm going to clear the screen. Now, see if you can remember how we installed um, Apache last time. The very first thing we did was just a yum update. It's always good to get into the habit of this because you're updating the, um, you know, the kernel. Um, so you're applying all your security patches, making sure that your EC2 instance is as secure as it can be. Uh, it can take a little bit of time. And there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen. And what I want to do is I want to install uh, Apache. So I'm going to just type in yum install httpd minus yes and that's going to go ahead and install apache and that's done and so i've just cleared the screen and now what we need to do is start the apache service so all we do is we type service httpd start and there we go it started it and now what we want to do is we want to make sure that the apache service 
starts automatically every time we um, you know boot up our EC2 instance. So if for some reason it restarts itself without our you know our guidance, um, we want the Apache service to come on automatically. So to do that, we just type in check config and then httpd and then on and that will make sure that the Apache service always starts every time we reboot. So I'm going to clear the screen and we're going to go to our var www html directory. And so anything in this directory will be publicly accessible. So this is where we're going to create our websites. And if we type in ls, we can see that there's nothing in there right now. So what I want to do is just create a website. I'm going to call it index.html. So we use our nano index.html. If you remember from the last lecture, nano is just basically a text file editor. Um, so in here, we're just going to write HTML, and then we're just going to write H1, and it will be Hello Cloud Gurus. And then I'm going to end my header, and then I'm going to end the HTML. And yes, we could uh, do a bit more HTML. We could have like bodies and titles and all of that, but I'm just keeping it really, really Really simple. You could even just type Hello Cloud Gurus in here, it wouldn't make any difference. Uh, so hit Control X, um, it will ask you if you want to save, hit yes, and then hit enter. And then if we just type in ls, we can see our index.html directory in there. So now the next thing I want you to do is open up a web browser. Okay, so I'm in my web browser, and if I just click up here and if I paste in the public IP address, we should be able to see, there we go, Hello Cloud Gurus. So we've got our web page. Now the very first thing I want you to do is just go back over to the EC2 management console and go over to security groups and click on your web DMZ security group. And in here you can see um, the description, so you can see the name, the group ID, the group description and the VPC that it's sitting in. And then in here we've got our inbound rules and note we've got three inbound rules and then in outbound we actually just have all traffic, so we're allowing all traffic out um, across all protocols, across all ports to any destination. Then here we've got our tags and we have no tags whatsoever. So if I was to go in and delete this HTTP rule, what do you think would happen? How fast do you think um, deleting this would stop us being able to see HTTP traffic? Do you think it would be immediate? Do you think it would take a couple of minutes? Do you think it would take 24 hours? Um, well, let's go ahead and have a look. So with HTTP, I'm going to delete it hit save and now I'm just going to go back over to this tab and I'm going to go and hit the refresh button and you can see here down here it says connecting 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 and so that answers your question any rule you make to a security group applies immediately and this is a really important topic to remember in your exam because you're going to get a whole bunch of different scenario questions uh, you might be trying to troubleshoot something and of course it will ask you you know a scenario where you've got to fix something um, it might ask you how to fix something and then it might also ask you how quickly it's going to take now if you're fixing a security group or if you're implementing rules across security groups, it happens immediately as you can see here. So this is just going to time out, I'm not going to wait for it. Uh, if we go back and then add in our rule again, so go here and edit, add rule, we're going to add HTTP, HTTP back, so go here and go ahead and hit save. Now we can click back here and just hit refresh again. And it, it did pause for a little second, but it has uh, now refreshed and you can see it says Hello Cloud Gurus. So there we go. It does apply immediately. So let's go back to our EC2 management console. Now notice that we've got three rules in here, but we have um, just this one rule in here. Um, so if we go in and just delete this rule, um, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that um, basically now what we've got in terms of our rules is we're allowing HTTP traffic in. So when we're making a request to view the web page, that request is going to hit the web server. But do you think the traffic is then going to come back out because we've just deleted all our outbound rules? It says it has no rules. Do you think we'd be able to resolve it? Well, again, let's go and have a look and hit refresh and it loads straight away. So this is really another really important point. So security groups are stateful and that simply means that when you add a rule down here, whether it's HTTP, SSH, HTTPS, RDP, whatever it is, um, that rule will automatically be allowed back out. It doesn't matter that you have no outbound rules here whatsoever. As soon as you add an inbound rule, outbound rules are added automatically. So anything that you allow in will go out as well. So that means it's stateful. Now, when we come to the VPC section of the course, we're going to look at network access control lists and they're stateless. So when you add an inbound rule, you also have to ha um, add an outbound rule. Um, so we will cover that off in the VPC section, but the thing I want you to take 
away from here is that security groups are stateful. So just by adding an inbound rule, it automatically adds an outbound rule. Now you can go back here um, and just go in and add our um, all traffic just to um, you know make sure it's consistent. So just add all traffic, all protocols, that port range, and then put our CIDR address block as o .o .o o .o forward slash o forward slash o. And then we go hit save. And so uh, now we've set it back to what our security group was by default. And finally, I want you to pay attention here. If we just go into editing our security rules, so it says um, edit inbound rules, and we want to add a rule. Note that you can't deny traffic. I can't just deny traffic um, you know, from uh, SMTP, or I can't deny POP3 traffic. I can only allow traffic in. So everything is blocked by default, and then I allow traffic in. I can't specifically deny traffic over a port, and I can't specifically deny an IP address using um, security security groups. I can do that using network access control list and we will cover that off again in the BPC section of the course. Okay, so there's a couple more things I want to show you quickly. Um, first, we're just going to look at our default security group. So we can see in here it says all, allow all traffic from all protocols from all port ranges from the source and the source is itself. So basically this means that any um, instance that we put into this security group um, is able to communicate to other instances within this security group. And that's created, it uh, doesn't matter what region you go into, if we click on Oregon for example, you'll see the default security group for your default VPC is always the same. So it's always the same uh, rule. Again, all traffic, all pr protocols, all ports, and then the sources itself. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, lecture um, that you can associate multiple security groups to one EC2 instance. Um, so let's go into this default security group. Let's go in and just um, add some more rules. Um, so I'm just going to go edit. I'm going to delete this one out. And I'm going to add a rule that allows, um, let's say, RDP, um, so Remote Desktop Protocol. This is for Windows. Um, so if you wanted to re you know, administer your Windows PC remotely, you'd use RDP. Also going to add in MySQL and Aurora. These are important port numbers to remember, certainly if you're doing the SysOps Administrator exam. So 3389 is RDP. MySQL is 3306. Um, you don't really need to know them for the Solutions Architect or the Developer Associate exam, though. And then I'm going to allow them in for um, basically all traffic. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now my default security group is allowing RDP and MySQL, and then my web DMZ is allowing HTTP, SSH, and HTTPS. Now if we go back to our instances, so in here we can see it says security groups, we can see it's just associated to my web DMZ currently. Um, if I want to add in a new security group or an additional security group, it's no it doesn't really show you here. It doesn't have like an add button. Um, the trick is to do it up here. So you go to actions, you go over to networking, and then you just go to um, change security groups. And then in here, I can add my default security group. I could remove my web DMZ if I wanted, um, but I can have multiple security groups assigned to this uh, EC2 instance. So I've done that now. If I click on view inbound rules, I'll be able to see some some nice checkboxes here. Um, so um, I can see that under my default security group, it's allowing 3306 and 3389. Under my web DMZ, um, it's basically allowing 8022443. Remember, you can't deny anything at a security group. You can only allow. So basically, um, it, there's not ever going to be any conflicts at this level. Um, so you can't deny port 80 in one security group and allow it in another. Um, so basically, it adds up all the security group, all the different rules, and then just allows traffic in. Now, if yours doesn't look like this, if it's missing the nice little green text, just try removing this security groups and adding them again, and it should work. Um, this can actually be a little bit buggy. It took me a couple of goes to uh, show it up in this particular video. Uh, and that's really it. So let's cover off what we've learned in this lab so far. So we learned that all inbound traffic is blocked by default when you first create a security group. So you have to go in and allow traffic. You have to allow HTTP or HTTPS or MySQL or RDP or SSH. Um, all outbound traffic is allowed automatically by default. And then changes to security groups take effect immediately. So as soon as we uh, opened or blocked port 80, not blocked, but you know removed port 80, we're no longer able to visit our own web page. We then learned that you can have any number of EC2 uh, instances within a security group. And then we also learned that you can have multiple security groups attached to an individual EC2 instance. And um, you know because you can't have deny rules, you can only have allow rules. Um, you're not going to get any conflicts there. It's just going to add up all the allow rules and then uh, go from there. 
And then we learned, and this is really, really important, that security groups are stateful. So what do we mean by that? Well, when you create an inbound rule allowing traffic, that traffic is allowed back out again automatically. Now, this is not only a key exam topic, this is a key interview topic as well. So when you're going uh, and getting interviewed for AWS, I've actually had this uh, myself, both from AWS and from some consultancies that I used to work for. Um, one of the the interview questions was to explain the difference between a security group and a network um, access control list. Well, security groups are stateful, network access control lists are stateless, and we're going to cover that off in the VPC section of the course. Um, remember that you cannot block specific IP addresses using security groups. Instead, you always use network access control lists. Again, we're going to cover that off in the VPC section of the course. That particular topic comes up so many times in the um, security uh, speciality exam. You'll be given a whole uh, bunch of different scenario questions and you'll be asked um, the best way to secure your environment and should you block an IP address um, you know, using a security group? Well, you can't. Um, you always use network access control lists as we saw from the labs. You can also um, specify allow rules, but not deny rules. Again, very, very important. You can't deny, um, and I sort of just said this earlier, but you can't deny not just to a specific IP address, but I can't just deny HTTPS um, traffic. Uh, for example, by default, nothing is allowed, um, but I always uh, um, you know, allow rules in. I can't specify a deny rule. So that is it for this lecture, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture. Thank you.